Good morning. How are you, sir? <laughs> Good morning. Medium fast, uh, Rowan, is the rod. What? Medium fast. Yeah, I just looked. Ooh. That was a failed skip attempt. You lost at least a five pounder with me. You gotta beat him. I'm, I'm trying. He has a five pounder out here. At least, though. So. There's not a single day where I go on fishing here and not fall. Somebody might drip at least a four or five pounds. Every time. I don't remember getting invited, dude. <laughs> uh, you were a class two. So. Oof. Class two class. I'll miss those days.
got on the GoPro though. My biggest is five seven. As I went to take a picture of that fish, he did it, went up doing a big head shake and went up falling off. It is what it is. At least I got him on film for you guys and just went up catching, uh, as you guys saw, three, two and a half, three pounder right after that. They're tearing up this jig today. That's two fish, two casts. Uh, hopefully it stays that way. And these fish are fighting hard. So we can keep the streak up. There he is. What about the structure? Thought that was one. All right guys, so this is a new bait that I just picked up the other day I'm gonna try out. It's a uh, Six Sense glider uh, shad impersonator. It's a little glide bait. Uh, pretty much you just cast it out there and it suspends. And you just wanna twitch it every every so often. And pretty much the bait is just gonna sh sh side to side. And this thing is huge, so if something eats us today, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Hello. Hi, 
Hi, this is Rachel from Dealer Services. Your file just came across my desk. Sure and did. it looks like your vehicle may be at risk of losing coverage. In order to prevent your extended warranty from expiring, All right, guys, I want to teach you a little bit. This is a Guggenbait, a half ounce, I think a juice jig. And it's got a rattling Ned uh, crawfish impersonating uh, trailer on it. And at the end here, it's got a little rattle. You can hear it rattle. It's going to get the fish's attention when it's underwater. And uh, today we're fishing pretty clear water, so that's why I'm throwing the color that I'm I have on right now. It's like a uh, it's like a peanut butter and jelly color. So kind of natural natural color in the water. So with a jig, you want to fish a lot of cover. So you want to fish like spots like where the, the trees are going in the water or underneath here in the shade. And you just want to either skip it just like that under there and once the bait hits the water you want to drop your rod and the reason why you want to do that is you want to let the baits actually sink to the bottom instead of sinking and coming towards you so most of the time fish are underneath the structure right there underneath a tree or whatever so when you drop that bait if you don't drop your rod it's going to pull the bait away from the fish instead of actually dropping it right in front of where where the fish is sitting so that's why you kind of want to drop your rod when you take a cast. So when it comes to actually fishing the jig, when you cast it out to where you want to cast it, you know, either shade, like I said already, or some logs, whatever, you want to drop that rod tip down like we just talked about. And then you want to slowly, there's, there's multiple ways you can kind of work a jig. So you want to get a tight line. This is the first way. And you can just drag it. Drag it on the bottom, reel your slack in. Let it sit, drag it in, reel your slack down. Let it sit. And then hopefully you'll feel that fish within the first minute of it being in the water. All right, <clears throat> bear with me, this wind, uh, we have a very light breeze today, but it's just enough to keep pushing me in the cover. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So, the other way of fishing a jig, cast it wherever you want. So I just skipped underneath that tree. My rod tips down, I'm gonna let it sink to the bottom. I'm gonna reel in a tight line, and I'm just gonna pop it, like two times. Reel in the slack, let it sit, pop it. Reel it in the slack, let it sit, pop it. Let it sit. And you're gonna kinda drag it too. Kinda do a combination, let it sit. And usually, where well, you're, you're casting is most likely where the fish is going to be sitting at. So usually, for the most part, if you don't get a bite, if you don't get a bite within the first minute of it being in the water, most likely you're not going to get one. It's, you might as well burn it in, take another cast, try to get it up in there again. I'm getting hit right now, I think. daylight today it's hot it's sunny these and this water is relatively clear so when it's sunny like this and the water is clear the bass are typically held close to structure 
you know, clear water to bass in. They're ambush predators, so they want to be able to hide and be able to be hidden from bait fish. And also, smaller bass want to be hidden from bigger bass so they don't get eaten. So, on these sunny days in clear water, they're usually up close in the shade or on the on the shade, I just a little bass follow this up. Um, we're on like shade transition lines, like right where that shade line is underneath that tree. Things like that. Again, I'm just casting it, popping it. Bottom. This this lake is a uh, very sandy bottom, so uh, I'm just kind of popping it. If it's a rocky bottom, you might be better off dragging it because it's gonna bang off those rocks and make noises and things like that and really get the fish's attention. All right, guys, so I'm giving this a try. This is a uh, clickbait by Guggen Squad. A little white color with a uh, young like fluke trailer, I guess pretty cool bait it's new it just came out with it it's pretty much the same thing as a chatter bait but it has these little metal ceramic balls on it so as this blades rocking back and forth in the water these metal balls are spinning and clicking the blade pretty neat it's, it's a lot of noise Catch his fish. I think we'll go try that corner where it looks a little shaded. Yeah. No, it's not. Look at the head on that thing. Wow. Oh. There we go. Dude, that's nice. Don't we get the scale? Grab that paddle with your other hand. Five four. Let's go. You want a picture? Yeah. Got him? That's a good one. You know what's crazy? That fish would be four and a half if it wasn't so skinny. It looks so. Yeah. No, 
slice. Yeah, he's got a head of a five, but he's so. Yeah. He looks kind of like. Oh, he is. Good job, dude. On a crankbait. Yeah. There you go. Dude, good job. Sorry if I got got you wet there. But yeah, dude, that he had a head of a friggin' like four plus. Yeah. That's crazy. Super skinny for Like I said, he looked a little, a little sick. Yeah. Hey, still a friggin' nice fish. That's awesome. Good job, man. that time <laughs> yeah what time is it it's 11.50 <sighs> right, it was right out right out here off this point how deep does that go um 6 to 14 or something I don't know it seems like it goes pretty deep because when I bring it to the boat it's coming straight up for a while yeah so it's pretty deep then one other thing when you're fishing Jay you want to make sure you fish with a at least a medium heavy rod I wouldn't really go much later than that. Reason, oh, that was a fish. Reason being is, um, if you have a lighter rod, when you're jigging the bait on the bottom, you gotta realize that these jigs have what, what's called weed guards on them. And pretty much what a weed guard is, it, it helps prevent with snags and makes your jig pretty much weightless. So. This is called a jig guard right here. And that is so anything hits that, it brushes off of the hook. Now the reason why you want a medium heavy rod is not only do you have to get that hook in this fish's mouth, but now you gotta get that hook in the fish's mouth through that weed guard. So you wanna have some bone and muscle to the rod that you're using. So that way when you set that hook, you have to really set it good and it should be enough to push that weed guard down and hopefully hook up on the bass that's hitting your another little trick with a jig when you're fishing tight spots say i want to fish i want to get a jig right by that log and you can't flip you don't have enough room or whatever you can let your line out grab your jig by the bottom tilt your rod tip down and you're going to fling it and it should go right to where you want it to go again rod tip down let it sink and slowly bounce it back. Again, pretty much grab the bottom of your beat, pull it, and fling it right out to where you want it to. That's a great way when you're fishing structure to get it exactly where you want it to go. If you think the bass is under a certain log or whatever like that, it's a great method to get up under there and get right to the fish. Pretty much drop it right in front of their face. What's up everybody? So we're back at home. We're off the water. Had a couple really good days of fishing. All the footage that you guys just saw was two different days of fishing. And we we're fishing a private lake that I've never fished before. My buddy, uh, his family member lives on the lake, gave us permission to fish it for, the, for a couple days with him. And the rumor was, was there's some really big fish in that lake and come to find out the rumor's true. We, we caught some pretty nice fish. Uh, the first day was real rainy, overcast, and we had a really good day. Caught a lot of big bass. Unfortunately, I had a couple uh, camera malfunctions, so I didn't get all the fish on camera. But I made sure to take some pictures for you guys, which will be posted at the end of this video. Uh, in the second half of this video, obviously you guys saw, I tried to teach a little bit on how to fish a jig. All the bass that I caught at least um, the past two days were on a jig uh, for the most part and jig fishing is really uh, a good way to catch bass and it's fun it's different so I hope you guys learned something from that if you guys want to see uh, something different or want me to teach you guys something different on what how to fish certain lures or whatever drop a comment down below and uh, I'll be sure to get on it making a video for you guys so I want to thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys on the next one. Please make sure you like and subscribe and keep fishing.